Uh, my name is Kaixiang Xu, and uh, I'm a PhD, PhD, uh, PhD researcher from Hong Kong University of Science Technology here in Hong Kong. And jo joining with me here is our excellent industrial partner, Peter Pan from Dark Cloud, um, a leading contributor of CNCF. Okay. So today we're going to talk about um, this unified cloud native infrastructure for AI and HPC. So uh, this is a project that um, the university and our industrial partner has been working on in the past few years to manage a shared multi-tenant AI cluster. So as you may already know, um, the advancement of large model has attracted significant investment in, um, in AI computing technology, including the purchase of hardware and including a lot of researchers working on in, in this area. So uh, there, is a, there is a challenge um, met by this uh, establ establishment of these AI, AI clusters is that we do not really have a, a, a production-ready um, cluster management solution that, that helps the user of this cluster, the user of these clusters to, um, to efficiently utilize this large fleet of GPUs. So what, so what do what do we have today? Today we have in, in, in universities the most widely adopted solution is Learn, right? It's a very popular tool that's used by not only computer computer scientists but also uh, scientific computing in maybe physics, chemistry, and all the kinds of di different majors in the in the, in the university. But it, it is very basic when it comes to the AI AI era or whatever. Um, so first, it does not really have a very robust uh, tool, tool chain to manage dependencies, right? Uh, the, the, the user of Slurm needs to submit uh, their own bash script to set up the dependency, and sometimes uh, they also need to require the operator, the class operator's help to install certain hardware because Slurm only have non-root privileges, right? Um, but still, because the easy to use nature and it also integrates with a lot of current tool, tools in scientific research, um, SLURM is no wonder the, the, the number one choice of, um, of class, class, class management solution uh, here in university. On the other hand, you know, we, we, have, we apparently have Kubernetes. Um, Kubernetes can solve maybe all of this problem, right? You, you can easily manage dependencies. Uh, you have very good failure control. You have very good uh, tool chain that helps with every aspect of deployment of such research experiments. But it comes with one hurdle, the usability hurdle. For AI researchers, for AI, AI users, understanding all the concepts, all the concepts in the Kubernetes workflow um, it's a little bit too much. Okay, so this is the project. Th this is where the product came in. in. In the past few years, we uh, we managed to bridge the advantages of the usability of Slurm, but also the uh, feature and uh, performance and utilization uh, 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 utilization advance uh, in uh, in Kubernetes. So this is uh, what we have built so far. So, in, so from 2021, we have deployed um, a AI computing infra infrastructure, argu arguably the, the biggest um, computing infrastructure here in Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Uh, today, we, have, we are serving more than 500 users. Uh, this is a little bit old. Uh, we, are, we are serving more than 500 users, uh, faculties and students uh, in our university. So this infrastructure combined with the efforts from our industrial partner and from our research team, it is tailored for AI research and it is optimized from both software and half hardware level. So its performance, its usability, its utilization, its efficiency is all optimized, it's tailored for AI research. Um, so in this talk, we're going to cover the infrastructure design of this, um, uh, of this solution. So uh, on the very top level, we have 
we have user interface. So we have a seamless machine learning as a service interface that streamline the management, the submission, the management, the monitoring of machine learning tasks, as well as retrieval of the output, retrieval of the result of the machine learning experiments. Okay. So here we have abstracted this workflow. So, so, so you may already know, um, in, in, in the traditional uh, cloud computing, we, the abstraction is just a mirror of what we have in hardware. So we have software de defined network, we have instances, which is basically the host, right? And we also have um, the cloud storage, which is, which is just the storage, right? We, we abstract the, 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 the cloud computing workflow exact as what we have at the very lower end. But with machine learning clusters, to, serve, to better serve the AI, AI users, which is not really computer system professionals, right? We have abstracted this, this, um, this interface into data sets, framework, and applications. So people, sub people submit their application may maybe in the form of a Slurm job or Kubernetes job, uh, like a container file, and they, they have their data set already stored in our cluster, and they also have their requirements, like how many GPUs they want to use, and like how fast they want to complete their job. So all these kind of requirements are abstracted as the concept that AI researchers are really familiar with, but not uh, the, the, the traditional cloud computing abstractions. So that's the first layer. And on the second layer and third layer, we have cluster scheduler, right? Because, because this cluster is shared. It's a multi-tenant uh, uh, multi uh, cluster, cluster resource. We need cluster orchestrator or resource scheduler to determine um, the resource um, allocation strategies. And that is developed by our excellent industry, industry partner from Dark Cloud. And on the very lower end, we also have infrastructure, which um, is like some maybe RDMA enabled storage, RDMA networking um, that really runs the, that, that really co uh, connects the cluster into um, one, re one resource pool. So that's going to be the three part of our uh, of our talk today. So before we dive in into the in, uh, into the three layers that, that I just introduced, uh, I, I, I also want to briefly touch on uh, the research opportunities, the computer system research opportunities that is opened up by this infrastructure, right? Because, it, because, the, because this infrastructure has three layers, the interface layer, the scheduler layer, and the, infra, uh, and the, um, the, 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 the hardware layer. So each of these layer actually bears lots of research opportunities from ac academia perspective. So on the machine learning framework, on the machine learning framework side, uh, we have uh, research that enhances the model development process by uh, finding more para parallelization uh, opportunities and also efficiently handle the distributed communication between each of the single worker in a big model training or inference process. That's the machine learning frameworks. So the machine learning, so the, so in a nutshell, the machine learning framework takes input as the model, takes the model as the input, right? And it compiles the model into a distributed parallel processes and efficiently handles the interleaved and complex communication pattern. So that's what the machine learning framework does. Okay. And on the lower end, um, we have cluster resource scheduler. So, um, the machine learning frameworks, we can see this as the application, right? In a shared cluster, we have multiple instances of this application. So the cluster resource scheduler needs to decide on how to allocate this, um, the limited pool of resource to multiple applications to improve some certain metrics. So from a research perspective, our, our a matrix is cluster-wide job completion time. 
for example, the average job completion time or the like 95 percentile job completion time. But in, in reality, in, in, in the industry, we, we may have some other metrics. For example, uh, the, 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 the complete power usage, right? Because different tasks have different power profile. And by deciding on the, the, the scale, the scale of, of resource that we assign to a single application, we actually can control the uh, total power consu consumption of the cluster. So the cluster scheduler has different strategy targets different metrics. Uh, today here, we're gonna introduce the strategy that we use, which is like a fair r resource allocation because, uh, because like a uh, resource like this is a public, public resource in the university, so we need to have a fair allocation. But uh, actually in, in academia or in industry, we might have different metrics uh, which can be implemented as different kinds of scheduling uh, policies, scheduling strategy in the uh, in this resource scheduler layer. Okay, so on the very lower end, we have hardwares. So here, when we talk about hardware, we talk about AI-centric hardware. So that means uh, in network we have RDMA, right? We have if any band network we have Rocky V2, uh, uh, Rocky V2 networking. Um, in academia, we mostly uh, research Rocky Way 2 because there's not much to be done in, in IB. And, and, and also, Rocky Way 2 comes with uh, better pricing. Its, it's, it's, it's price is about uh, 40, uh, 30 to 40% 30 to 40 uh, compared to what it costs for InfiniBand. Um, we also have uh, like smart SMARTNIC smart -nick is a special type of FPGA which can intercept network traffic and do something of what we call um, in network in network computing to offload some of the compute from CPU or from GPU but is that we we done it right there in the uh, in the net, in the, in the network card, and that that is that uh, that is what we call compute offloading, and it's done in the network. So here, yeah, I here I I, I briefly introduce um, the research opportunities that applies to the three layers of infra of infrastructure that I'm going to introduce that, that we are going to introduce uh, in the in the in the later part of our talk. Yeah, um, Peter will, will, will mention this at the end of the talk, that we have open sourced all this code and the tutorials to show you how to uh, use, this, um, use this solution. And actually we have um, our infrastructure, our, our, our cluster at Hong Kong UST is also free to use uh, for faculties and students, uh, but if you submit um, if you submit a, a user application, we will also approve. Uh, you just mentioned that uh, you are from this conference. Okay. So um, I'm going to introduce the first part, the, the interface part. So for the interface part, uh, we, do, we, we do things very similar to what Slurm has already done. Right, because Slurm is is the widely adopted, the widely used, the most user friendly interface um, for AI users for for uh, scientific researchers. Okay, so here what we have done is uh, we put our workflow abstraction into one file. So as I mentioned, the apps the, the abstraction contains three parts: the application itself, like the code, uh, the dependencies and also the data, right? So here uh, in this file, it's like a mini version or a meta version of Docker file. So it's, it's like a wrapper of, do of Docker file that provides all the uh, dependencies um, to the user's application. So that saves the user to write a Docker file which is not really familiar, which is not really in their skill set, like the AI user skill set. So, so we abstract this process into some very basic requirements. So the user, the AI users only need to give us their code, give, their, give, give us their dependency requirements, and we help them build a Docker file or, or a Slurm job to submit to our cluster. 
So this is the unified part, right? So no matter the cluster is mostly managed by Slurm or, or Kubernetes, this is the interface, the file that the user submits to our cluster. Um, next, um, so on a little bit uh, system perspective, uh, what we have been doing is that we transfer this config file along with all the code and applications and data that users submit to us from, lo from user's local command line to the server side. It's, it's not really the compute node, but the management node. And on there, we have a process of what we call compiling. So we compile the user's code, user's config file, user's data into the job that we, we would like to run in our underlying cluster. So the compiling process is where we really unify the two different cluster management solutions. Mm -hmm. Looks like you are running your Slurm cluster mm -hmm. on top of a Kubernetes cluster. Is that safe to assume? Because your user mm -hmm. is submitting Slurm's CLI into mm -hmm. your Slurm's controller node. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. So first, we're going to cover the uh, the infrastructure parts at the later part of our uh, presentation. So so you will understand how, how we actually connect Slurm with Kubernetes. Yeah, right. But I, I also want to uh, highlight that uh, here, we're not really using the Slurm CLI. We are using a CLI that's built by ourselves because Slurm, uh, Slurm, actually, it has a CLI, right? But the CLI has to be running inside the Slurm cluster, right? But here, where our CLI is running local from the user's laptop, the, the, the user's PC, right? So we ask the user to write something like this config file, and the config file is put together with all their code and data, and they use our local CLI submit to the management node, where we compile their, their, their job package to either Slurm format or Kubernetes, for, Kubernetes for, format, depending on which infrastructure, which, uh, which cluster this job is intended for. Okay. Yeah. So uh, for, for the specific details of how we connect these two parts, uh, our industry partner, Peter, will introduce that later. Okay. So here, as you can see, uh, from a user perspective, they do not really need to know how we, how we, how we deal with their, their job package. They submit their job config and they submit um, their, um, they submit their job package and they submit their, um, their user code and data and we took that from there, okay? So next, I'm gonna give time to our excellent industry partner, Peter Pan from DocLaw to introduce how the infrastructure is actually designed to make that happen. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Xu. Uh, he runs the TSCC very well, uh, best, both for academic purpose and for serving students. So I will um, introduce some more technical detail. Um, all right. So uh, in this survey, Kubernetes and Slurm are the uh, first choice uh, for the most the AI uh, technical stack. So uh, Kubernetes is keep evolving very quickly. Uh, so I will uh, take, uh, talk about some technical detail about how to implement it by Kubernetes. Um, for time's sake, I will skip some detail. So first, is for the infrastructure engineer. Uh, after they power up those GPU machine, it's just the first step. Next, uh, they have to build the Kubernetes to put the resource into a pool. Then, using GPU operator to uh, automatic uh, management the driver, plug in, runtime, etc. Then, uh, using the DCGM exporter to do the monitor. And uh, moreover, using some virtual uh, GPU virtualization uh, technique to uh, in increase the efficiency. And uh, Volcano and Q, uh, just like Dr. mentioned, some scheduling capability to uh, make it happen. 
if you will have a multi cluster, Commander is your friend to do that. And if you have a heterogeneous uh, GPU for different brands, things are similar. Kubernetes can cover them. Uh, unless um, some different GPU vendor have their own operator, uh, GPU operator, MPU, exporter, etc. But other parts are remain, uh, similar. All right. Uh, then I put on a scientist hat. Uh, for TSDC, uh, for each user, for the multi tenant first, for each user, we have a lamp space for them individually. Then we set up their lamp space quota and the queue quota for them. So I uh, limit their uh, privilege. Uh, next part for the uh, if you think the scientists can write AI code now, uh, wait. To run the code, as mentioned, we have the uh, Python code, we have the data set, we have the mod uh, base model, and we have the Python packages. If they like, run into the container, uh, how could they put these things together? Maybe you have to build a Docker file. Um, for scientists, it's too difficult, I think. That's their pain. They don't want to understand what is Docker build. And if anything change, like the package version update, they need to build a new image. Okay? So uh, if an image size is huge, so we have a way, uh, thanks to Kubernetes, we put the those things into a shared storage and mount it into the container. So everything is uh, live in the shared storage instead uh, restricted in the Docker image. So um, then for the training, distributed training, Kubeflow is uh, one of the best choice. Kubeflow is a tool set. It combining a lot of tools, and we love the training operator most. Uh, it provide uh, it provide all reduced training, supporting uh, both volcano and queue, and very um, handy to achieve most of our purpose. Okay, uh, we have also provide a web UI uh, other than the CLI. Uh, this is the, our UI for notebook for the uh, developer purpose and for a job, for the training purpose. Okay, next come to the scheduler. Uh, scheduler is a big pen, uh, pen point for user. So when a workload, uh, okay, here scheduling and job, they are two things. All, um, always, we all, um, always measure them together, but they are actually two things. When a workload comes in, first, it should wait in the queue, okay? Then come to the scheduler to assign node. And Volcano, uh, it combine them together, but uh, another uh, way is using queue. They uh, work with the Kubernetes scheduler plugin to, uh, to achieve the same effect, to provide a lot of gun scheduling, preempt, uh, and the bin pack, et cetera. Okay, moving faster. Uh, the monitor, uh, the scientists also want to monitor something uh, uh, for uh, their, um, their usage, uh, their influence latency, and for the info guy, they need to monitor the inventory, healthy, and utilization. Uh, please aware that uh, when you're using the NVIDIA uh, SMI tool, it shows the GPU utilization, but uh, it's not a very uh, precise, accurate enough. So uh, be, uh, be careful about this. So the scientists, they can also use a TensorFlow to get their training result. And for Kubeflow, it provides very easy arena submit, dash dash TensorFlow can, uh, some kind of like a sidecar to show up the, uh, the results. Okay, uh, for the performance, there are some uh, bottleneck in the storage and then we just automation just now. Um, so for the storage, we can reuse uh, the existing HPC storage like Lustre, like the BGFS, uh, so mounted into the Kubernetes as well. And we can use some caching uh, methodology to, uh, just like JSFS and Alexure to imp uh, increase the speed for the model loading and data set loading. And we can use the local storage, uh, some home uh, open source project to uh, accelerate some of the uh, data checkpoint, et cetera. And SpiderPool is also a CNCF sandbox project to enable both the Lockheed and InfiniBand network. Okay, faster. Um, 
Okay, so here is uh, one of our attempt in TACC. We try to unify Kubernetes and Slurm together. Just we uh, just um, talk. So the question: How to deploy the Slurm? The first way is run Slurm inside a Kubernetes port. So one port for one Slurm cluster, or one uh, uh, some port for one cluster. This is the option one. Option two: Slurm and Kubernetes they can live in the same word space. Because uh, Slurm D is a Slurm agent, it, it doesn't conflict with the container D or Kubernetes. So the problem here is how to make them aware of each other. For example, if a node is occupied by Kubernetes, but Kubernetes, uh, but Slurm isn't aware of it. So they may be schedule the same, uh, schedule workload on the same node and compete with each other. They are fighting. Okay, uh, in the industry, a uh, uh, sunk project uh, is mentioned before, but so far it's not available so yet. So our, we have an experimental as following. Uh, so we put them uh, co-host in the same uh, machines. All right, so same interface, uh, TACC, T-Cloud interface, uh, Doctor mentioned before, but they can uh, become a Kubernetes port or either Slurm job and running on the same node, same uh, cluster. So, uh, okay, Kubernetes said we have three ports. Uh, we, we have three ports running on node one, two, and three. Slurm said, okay, I receive, I copy it. So I could reserve them. So I won't put any more Slurm uh, workload on that uh, nodes. Okay, the same with the visitor, the, the different ways are the same. So how we do that? Okay, we have a press holder. When we are running a Kubernetes job, like uh, using one GPU, uh, three nodes, etc. So because we control the entrance, the TACC will create a Slurm job at the same time as a press holder on the same uh, machine with same GPU request. And it will, the, the press holder will do real consuming job. It just sleep and wait, wait for the Kubernetes job finish, then it release the press holder. Okay, uh, same way for the different direction. Uh, here's the demo code for our attempting and you can try uh, to uh, later. So here is the demo. Uh, hope time is enough. Okay, here is the uh, small Slurm cluster with three nodes. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, so this is my laptop, remote laptop. I have the TACC configuration and my code. Just show, uh, Doctor showed just now. It can, it require three nodes and a, and GPU as well, and memory GPU as well. Then I submit. Uh, okay, uh, and a Python code here. Later, I will submit this. Uh, code and workload to remote cluster, and I will submit a Kubernetes job. So it will SCP uh, the artifacts to remote to remote machine. Then it will using a uh, Kubeflow to create a PyTorch job. And moving fast. Okay, uh, using Arena, this is the server side. Using Arena, we can see the training is running now. And the ports, uh, three ports are running on node one, two, and three, respectively. Okay. Then, the most interesting part here. I, you, uh, in Serum, I see a new um, 97 job is running and check the job detail. 
it requests the same resource as Kubernetes pull request and running exactly the same nodes. How it could happen? Let's check the magic here. Ah, small. Um, I using Slurm CLI to reach. Oh, sorry. To restrict. To restrict the workload running on the same node, and this script. In running a script, the script just uh, sleep, and wait. Kubu control wait the job until it's finished. So this is what the placeholder is. Okay, moving faster, running out of time. Okay, later on the job, uh, the Kubernetes job is finished, and we can see uh, the log and the status from your laptop without getting the full Slurm or Kubernetes server privilege. That's how TSCC uh, doing uh, FAQ later. Okay, uh, doctor, for the closing. Uh, yeah, so thank you very much. Um, Here wraps up our presentation today, and um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a joint effort from our industry partner and, and, the, and the university to, um, to design an infrastructure that's, uh, that both has uh, the advantage of, of, of leading open source projects, but also opens up research opportunities that I introduced uh, earlier in my presentation. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation, and uh, we would love to discuss with you afterwards. Thank you very much.